Uh, as Londoners uh, well know, the previous mayor and the government pushed the definition of affordable home to breaking point. Their definition included homes to buy for close to half a million pounds and homes to rent at 80% of market rates. When we started negotiating with ministers in 2016 for affordable homes funding, the entire budget was for intermediate homes to buy and there wasn't a penny available for rented housing of any sort. We've been pushing them every opportunity for more money for rented housing and we have uh, been building as many social rented homes as we can with the funding constraints we face. When I became mayor, I scrapped the definitions used under the previous mayor and I've been very clear what I mean by genuinely affordable. First, homes for social rent, which includes council homes. Second, homes for London living rent set at one third of local average incomes. And third, homes for shared ownership part by part rent, which helps Londoners buy without needing a large deposit. These three types of home have been at the heart of my affordable homes programme and my draft London plan. As I said earlier, it's only through our relentless perseverance that we managed to get any money for affordable rent. We then introduced our work around solution of capping rents for London affordable rent homes at social rent levels. This allowed us to use national funding to deliver genuinely affordable social housing for Londoners. By using my funding and planning powers, we've been able to build record, start building record levels of genuinely affordable homes. Under the previous Mayor's programme, the number of homes of social rent fell to zero. Last year, uh, we started building nearly 4,000. Over time, as legacy schemes complete and my planning policies are fully implemented, an increasing percentage of London's new supply will be one of my preferred uh, three uh, types of affordable homes. For any others, I've introduced an income cap in my planning policies to make sure that where rents are different than the level I would like to see charged, they're still genuinely affordable for Londoners. Given the bare cupboard I inherited, we've made real progress. We're very clearly heading in the right direction. However, we need a fundamental step change in investment from the government if we're going to truly end the housing crisis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I mean, as you know, um, I'm concerned about the number of dodgily definitioned homes still coming forward, but also within your proposed tenures, how they're defined. Um, a lot of the affordable housing products that, that you say are genuinely affordable are aimed at people on median incomes and that automatically makes them unaffordable for half of Londoners by definition who earn less than the average income. The London Tenant Federation says that the only genuinely affordable housing product that you are offering is social rent. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, I understand what they, where they're coming from, but what we're trying to do is work within the rules we're given by national government, uh, and so the national definitions are quite clear, uh, how we're giving funding is quite clear. My ask to the government, to address your point head on, is for, uh, for the amount of genuinely affordable homes that are social rent should be up to 70%, and the negotiations taking place with the government is to address that point, because you're right, many Londoners uh, don't receive a, uh, uh, you know, a living wage, many receive uh, the minimum wage and we need more homes with social rent so one of the things we are negotiating with the government for is to make sure we have far, far more social rent homes going forward. We we'll look forward to seeing uh, better grants and more grants for social rent in future for certain. Um, I want to go back to my original question and what is going on at the moment um, within the, the planning decisions that are being made now and looking through the London Development Database. Um, you mentioned um, your preferred tenures. That's three of the eight possible definitions of affordable housing. There's also um, affordable, intermediate listed there, um, starter homes, which do seem to be dying out, discount market rent, discount market sale. Um, now, apart from starter homes, um, seven of those definitions are still being used within planning permissions being given in London. In the last full year, we have 2018. <coughs> A quarter of permissions are for ten years within what we, I think, both would call dodgy definitions of affordable. Um, it's still a bit of a mess. Um, we know the word affordable has become meaningless. We know almost all of these definitions don't qualify as affordable housing. So, can you give us a deadline from when, in planning terms, dodgy definitions will no longer get permission? Well, there's two separate issues. One's allocation of grant money, two is planning. And so, you'll be where some of this grant money began in 2015, and that's why you mentioned the start homes. And we've tried to. Uh, I change. really want to concentrate on planning. Just can you can you tell us when they'll be phased out? Because there's still a quarter coming forward. So, so dodgy. one is grant money, second is planning. So we have a draft London plan, not a London plan final. So let's wait and see when the London plan comes into fruition. Uh, well, once the London plan is there, that will obviously take over the previous London and that'll plan. That'll wipe them out completely. Uh, there will still be some legacy schemes. Uh, obviously, there are those schemes that councils consider, which are below 150 uh, units. But we won't eventually go towards our model. But obviously. If there is grant money available from the government and if some councils are given permission, it's very difficult for us to get involved in those. Okay, sorry, I'll stop there. Thank you.